what yeah, advice yeah. do you have for anyone that has maybe like a major that is in like like the healthcare system mm-hmm. or just you know requires a lot of homework requires a lot of studying hours like all that time put in the mm-hmm. you know extra years after college like what advice would you have for them i guess trying to go through it then there's motivation yeah. like what you got no yeah of course i feel like you just kind of have to go into it knowing there's going to be days you don't want to do it that's just as hard as that is i wish somebody told me that because i always felt like i needed to be perfect i needed to like really want this you know and there's just days that are just not going to be that and it's kind of difficult but the way I always saw it and my best like piece of advice is as rigorous as it is when you're in a hospital you have to like a hospital setting you know especially when you go the med school route you have to be in a hospital at some point you know whether it's clinicals um, just getting experience before you even go and I always and actually my dad is the one that told me that and I was going through kind of a situation at the time um, that was rough, you know, with everything going on. And my dad told me, he's like, if it's something you really want to do and you want to be able to help others, you have to learn how to separate your personal life from your business life. And sometimes that's very difficult because it's like we're all humans, you know, it's like every day you go through stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's like what he said, being in a position of a doctor is kind of like a hero that doesn't wear a cape, you know, because you're in a high stress environment, you have patients' lives on your hands, families that are asking you, all the time like hey how's my patient doing you know um, so at any time I was going through a struggle or I felt like I just wanted to give it up one soccer has brought me so many good things in life you know although I don't play anymore till this day I will never say anything bad about it it's brought me so many great friends that I'm still in contact with it's teach me so much just in general about life just put all the like you know the footy aside of the actual games I've just matured so much from it and I just always thought, okay, this is a rough patch right now, but one day somebody's going to need me to be able to put those two things separate. Mm. So I always just told myself, I was like, if I can't do that now, I can't be that person for somebody else one day. So I need to learn to do that now, as difficult as it is, but it's a process, you know. Um, but yeah, my best piece of advice is just to, you kind of have to separate it, put your head down and just... My coach always told me from high school too, he's like, the days you don't want to do things is when you need to do it more. And it, yeah, it's like every day is, you know, sometimes an internal battle with yourself more than anything else external. Mm-hmm. So until this day, there's a lot of days where I just, you know, maybe I should have put more effort into things. But it's just a process, like everybody's learning, everybody's going through the same thing. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of the best piece of advice I would give out there and use your resources around you mm-hmm. yeah a lot of people don't use their resources there's so many people out there that want to help you there's so many people you know that are there for you and just a lot of people overlook it I sure did most of my college career and I wish I didn't I think I would be a lot further right now if I would have just like you know used in, the people around me in the academic sense or yeah academic and both personal just I would say both even this guy I should have reached out more times in college. That's crazy. In, in the we went through a phase. We went through a phase where I was so down bad in life that, like, do you remember this? We went from literally talking, like, every single day, hanging out in high school. And then I ended up, you know, this is way back in the day, but I ended up going into a relationship that I probably shouldn't have been in. I ended up hanging out with people I probably shouldn't have been hanging out with. Yeah. And I went like a whole year, basically, yep. without talking to Nadja, mm-hmm. which is crazy, mm-hmm. which is insane to I even do remember this. think about. And I then remember. one day, randomly, <laughs> I just <laughs> called you, and I'll we FaceTimed for like seven hours. Do you remember? It's like eight hours. Yeah, I still remember. Oh, yeah. funnier though, now that literally all the flashbacks are flowing back in. I know, right? It, so, I just it, I just remembered the other day about it, too, and I was, I was just thinking about like, how crazy life has like flipped in just a few years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I should have reached out to Nausea. So I'll also say this. Mm-hmm. What I was think, your perspective from it? My perspective? Okay. Because I just like disappeared. So first I was going to go into like a whole different route and ask you to say anything about how I actually bully you because I've known you yeah. for 10 years. Yeah. And for people that actually don't know how vocal I may actually 
be, I guess, people that just see me and they know me as like a quiet person, maybe because I don't want to talk in a room with full of people. That I don't <laughs> know, you know? But, yeah, that's but, true, that's true. So, since now I'm in Tampa mm-hmm. and most of my high school was in Montford, those years I only played center back. Yeah. So, of course, mm-hmm. being a center back, I have to be very vocal. Mm-hmm. And I got so used to screaming at people mm-hmm. that that is the very thing that I missed. Yeah. Because, like, you gotta, you see the entire field, mm-hmm. you have to also instruct everybody. Mm-hmm. So, with how you said, like, you know, you learned a lot of things from soccer, that was the main thing that I learned from being a center back. Yeah. And it was actually pretty interesting because I didn't know how many people actually looked down on the position of defenders. But. That helped lot, me yeah. to be a manager in so many different like work roles to where I just know how to work with people. Mm-hmm. I know how to, you know, get to certain deadlines. I could probably see a, a whole project or operation from wherever I'm sitting. So mm-hmm. it makes my career field a lot easier working with other people. Yeah. But going all the way back to my perspective, my perspective of when you had a, a rough time for a year, yeah, I was going to say that. I only ever told you I was always praying for you though, always. Oh, so I still do to this very day, and you're included. <laughs> <laughs> but no, truthfully, I was always praying for you, your dad, your mom, yeah, um, your brother, okay. um, even yeah. this little thing over here. <laughs> it was a gremlin, just a little yeah. bit, but no. But so I was gonna say that I'm not used to people disappearing, but I myself have that issue with secluding myself. Yeah. So sometimes I already completely understand like if someone just needs some time to like regroup. Themselves. But like my question is, did you think and like we can be fully transparent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you think that my relationship at the time and stuff had a lot to do with me just disappearing? Disappearing? Yeah. No. When you found out? No. Do you think it was the soccer? Did you did you think like I kind of reached a phase where I thought it was too cool for the people around me? Ooh, that's that's a genuine question. See that that would have never came to my mind though if you didn't say that. But now that I'm like trying to think of it, mm-hmm. I know you always like saw me in the best light. Mm. But that year was honestly like so bad for me in general. I'm I'm honestly gonna say no because there's certain there's people obviously like celebrities and stuff that you can see completely changed. Mm-hmm. I don't think that I ever thought of you as a person that changed because of wherever you're at. Mm-hmm. And of course, we still joke to this day about all the different types of athletes, some of these different types of people that you may have come across or know. Yeah. But I never have thought like, oh, I actually think she's too she's big too. now or Hollywood, whatever. Okay. I, I, always, have I legitimately always saw you as a little sister because, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, I was just bully you. Yeah, on your yeah, worst yeah. days, on your best days, I still. I remember there would be days I'd literally be crying, <laughs> like super <laughs> sad, <laughs> and you couldn't take me serious. <laughs> yeah, that's honestly crazy. We've really been I, through a lot. I remember. I don't even have to say this. I'll just say there was a time where you were really, really sad. <laughs> wait, wait, when was this though? Like, what year? Where, was I like in high school still? Was I in college? We were both in college. You can say it, like, full transparency. I, I don't remember what you're talking about. I'm just trying to think of how to say it so I don't expose you. But there was, a time, expose me, there was a time where you were in tears. You even took a photo. But it wasn't like... I took a photo of myself crying. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't like the... Like joking? It was serious? Yeah, yeah I could tell you were definitely like heartbroken. Mm-hmm. And then I said something so dumb. That was like not the right time to say it. I think I know you're but looking back all those situations i put myself in those situations it could have been all avoided that's just so funny it really could have but that's the reality of it but that's what i'm saying like just in general i matured so much from when i first entered college to now i look back and i'm like that poor girl you know Mm -hmm. but it's just a combination actually this is the first time i'm hearing this Mm mm-hmm so man honestly i didn't come to realize it really and i'm about to shout them out but until the relationship i'm in now and you know what's wild 
Mm -hmm. I was really about to mention, so he could hear right there, how we first met. Mm -hmm. Playing FIFA. Yeah. So, screw your boyfriend now. <laughs> he has been. <laughs> I've only beat him once in FIFA. People know that FIFA is the only game that I'm good at. And Mortal okay. Kombat. Oh, let's listen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> FIFA is the only game I'm good at, okay? I grew up. Uh, I had a, like a PlayStation 2 maybe a couple years after <clears throat> it came out. I got a PlayStation 3 from one of my little brother's basketball coaches. Um, I had an Xbox 360 from uh, my best friend, shout out to Mike, in college. Mike! Yeah. And there's only two people ever in my FIFA history who I've never been able to beat. Never. So Dylan Reed, screw you too. <laughs> and <laughs> John. <laughs> Uh, I beat him once, but still, to be losing thirteen to three in FIFA <laughs> is not is not the man. If you thought if you thought you had some negative thoughts, no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just imagine. We'll, we'll just scenario. Okay, mm -hmm. you're an NBA player. Mm -hmm. You're We'll give you a good height, like six, seven. Ooh, flat. NBA player. Mm -hmm. All you have done for your entire life, you were homeschooled, you were a kid. Mm -hmm. You just went to practice after, you know, get home, eat, watch some little NBA. You're watching the best of the best. LeBron, mm -hmm. Jordan, Kobe, Shaq, Magic. You know, you just watch them, study, and you know their moves, all that. And you go on the court, like, Everybody loves when you get the ball. Now it's time to chill with your homeboys, right? Mm -hmm. You got the sticks in your hand. Everybody starts laughing. Everyone's like, give me a turn, give me a turn. <laughs> and you're playing 2K. Mm -hmm. And you just can't win. Yeah. Nah, I'd be a bit heartbroken. You, man. I'd be down bad. There's <coughs> I'm sorry. There's <laughs> three. Shout out to Adele, because I've played Love You in the Dark every time I've lost and had to drop back home. <laughs> uh, that song is so good. I'm kind of getting sad. I, I got to get up this FIFA talk. But, what I'm sad about is that Adele's not performing anymore. Yeah, let's not talk about that either. I know. Adele, if, you can, uh, if you've ever seen this video, you got two people that. here that definitely want to see you perform or at least meet you in person because I was going to max up my credit card to be honest to go see her in vegas perform i know no. i can't believe i actually cried i was sitting on the you couch watching it edit mm -hmm. and nausea looks over and i just have a tear drop coming down my eye I, I was i probably cried two days before yeah, but I, don't, crazy. I know adele is like a high artist on your list do you have yeah. any other artists that you've been listening to like you've just been like a die hard mm. fan for a long time there's definitely like people I want to see in concert. Like a Coldplay concert is like top of my bucket list. I keep hearing it. I just hear it's like a life changing experience. So definitely I would like to go to a Coldplay concert. Uh, but it's kind of like weird. This might be controversial, but I don't necessarily listen to them all the time. But when I do, I feel very like euphoric in a sense. And I'm like, this would be so cool to see in a concert. Um, Lana Del Rey. I love Lana Del Rey. I hear her concerts are amazing too. Um, I can't hear a song of hers. It, it's um, okay. She's a very like particular mm -hmm. artist. I feel like. Pretty sure she's, I bet, I bet the song that I'm thinking of is really good. So I'm not I'm not hating on the artist. If you that. hear a song, mm -hmm. like there's a couple songs where people hear and they don't even know it's her, but it's just like okay. famous songs, you know. Um, Are there artist concerts that you've been to that you can rank best? You know, like top three, mm -hmm. top three artist concerts that you actually been to. Mm. I went to Ariana Grande's Thank You Next. We don't stand Ariana Grande anymore, but before I don't, I actually don't know. Let me not be controversial, but it's not going down that route. I don't know. I just heard some stuff on the news, and I'm okay. like, that's not very girls' girls of you, but I mean, just there, I guess. Not the mirror, not the mirror girl. Not the mirror, not <laughs> girls' girl energy. Okay. I don't, I don't mess with that. Okay. Um, but yeah, her Thank You Next concert though was really, really good. Okay. And it was just kind of like a last minute thing. Like my aunt just invited me and I was like, sure. Ended up loving it. Um, but genuine concert that I really enjoyed. Um, 
Manuma's concert was really good. We were just talking about that earlier today, actually. Can you describe? This is all that I've heard. Because mm -hmm. I've seen Maluma maybe once or twice. Just how it looks. Yeah. Can you describe the obsession with. My obsession? No, no. Like, oh, I across like, the. No, like. But <coughs> you know, like. What the obsession is, with Maluma? Yes. Um, from a former. No, from a current Greenville. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I will say, and this may just. Maybe like this, maybe me just assuming, um, and I don't want to speak for all the Puerto Ricans out there or Puerto Rican women in general, as a Puerto Rican. But I don't think he's as hyped necessarily in Puerto Rico culture. Oh. He's a big artist, very big artist. I'm sure a lot of women will find him attractive, find him as a good singer. But I don't think he's necessarily like the ink guy. He's not like that buddy, you know. But in Colombia, he's Colombian. You know, mm -hmm. he's He's an it over there. So, and I think he definitely had a bigger wave like a few years back. I think now it's like Fade, obviously Garo G was like a big one. But the whole thing with Maluma, I think it's just kind of like a Neymar thing. I think they like the tattoos, they like the suave type yeah. of vibe. Yeah, when I think of <coughs> Neymar, I just think of like his tattoos, the suave, you know, like cool guy type of. So maybe it's that. I, I really don't know. I, I've never been one to really, like, necessarily fangirl over. I think he has a very amazing voice and some very good songs, though, like, genuine. Um, but yeah, I think it's just all relative, to be honest. Yeah, we, I should, we should make a road trip and go to one of those days again. So, Jose is going to be playing here at UT. At UT? Oh, no, nah, okay. take it back. He's going to be playing at Lint, but, like... No, yeah, but he's <laughs> playing against UT. Yes. Oh, that's fine. I'm, sure I'm gonna say this down. right now. I'm gonna stir up some, you know what I'm saying? Commotion. I'm here for I it. hope Lynn break the. Really? Like, As a fellow UT? Like, if they. I want them to go 20 ball. Just cuz. For real. And I will act a fool. <laughs> like, I, will, I just will. Wait, do you know when the game is? No. Uh -huh. I got no clue. It's probably like late yeah. this year. Sorry, UT. Like, I really hope Lynn put a beating in y'all, so. That's we'll see. Crazy. I'm sorry. A UT graduate wishing downfall. Amen. It's one thing if you're wishing like your brother well, but you're wishing the whole like school. I hope that Lynn drops at least 15 on University of Tampa. For real. Shout out to them boys at UT though. Nah, you can't shout them out after you just said that. Okay. You cannot <clears throat> shout a team out. I, can I wish them well on a good season, but not against Lynn? Just because my bro is on the team, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's not even because your brother. You're just preying on their downfall right now. I'm really not though. I would. I. They've been trying for the longest time to elevate that program, and I give like I wish them all the best. Like I have really good. Like I got people that are on that team that I really genuinely hope that they're doing well. But when they play is my bro. I just want to see my little bro shine. Plus, from being in the that's household, fair, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm no one. How hard he actually has worked yeah. as an athlete. I Is he not going to be back in Florida? That's a good question. We might have to get him on here in general to yeah, see. Yeah, that'd be pretty that'd good. That would be a pretty epic little talk. That'd be pretty good. So shout out to O. If you don't know who Ose is, yes, he is my brother. He was actually on the team that upset Kentucky, uh, Oakland, with uh, Gold. <laughs> the one guy that was going to do the three. He got a he got a contract with He's uh, the Thunder, no? Yeah, but I think he just just missed something up. Like probably got released. Oh, for real? Yeah, but still, like that dude was a sharp. Yeah. Shoot. That was a crazy was time. Insane, yeah. I was with my uncle in Canada. I remember we were <laughs> texting. <laughs> yeah, I was with my uncle in Canada. Yeah. And to hearing him be so excited. He was like, I got my family here and I'm watching my family on TV and they're upset in Kentucky. It's such a good time. He was just yeah, that's Happy. crazy. But you have you been much of a traveler? Like, have you actually traveled to maybe like Europe? Like, where are the places that you have traveled to that are just honestly no? I, I yeah, I know. Everybody always says that. I think honestly, growing up, I kind of had a little bit of a weird dynamic. So my parents are like college dropouts. You know, like just happen. And they're like business owners. So your dad's are basically super rare. I'm not trying to hype him up like that, but bro is, how tall is he? He's like 5'6". He could dunk. 
three, <laughs> five, six. Everybody always brings it up. I've only dunked once in my entire life, and no one saw. <laughs> <laughs> that was I was at Lake Sumter. Oh, in the basketball court. Yes, I was outside at Lake Sumter. No, you dunked once with me inside the Roberts Gym. You're right. Yeah, and you were like, that's my second time I've ever dunked. You were so, so right. excited. And so at least we got a witness. I have dunked before. Naja can dunk. So people who have said that I just couldn't, I literally have a witness right here. I've yeah. only dunked twice in my life. The first time, no one saw. I was in blue Adidas Air Z Fluxes. I remember the exact shoe. Really? Because I ended up losing them in college. I put them in the dryer. No. And they curled up. Dang, you messed up. Like a croissant. Exclusive, uh, what's it called? Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> 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 I messed up. He put a dog in it. Um, Isn't that like illegal? Probably. People do it anyway, don't they? But <clears throat> I was going to say, Lake Sumter. Yeah. The, the first time I dunked in the Adidas ZF Fluxes. Or the Z fluxes, whatever, they were blue. And you just ruined them. And the second one, I had red Kyrie's, red and black Kyrie's. And mm -hmm. I remember I would, since I'm shorter, I would have to like throw the ball up and then sprint as hard as I could. Yeah, because you couldn't palm Because I couldn't it. palm it. My got, dad was the same though. I have like fat palms. Don't say that. I have big palms, but shorter fingers. It's weird. So if I bob my fist, my mom used to always say like, I had heavy hands. So whenever mm -hmm. I like, you know, like the love tap for you just pass on my shoulder, she would say it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> she would say it hurts. So I just, so I actually at first, funny story. Mm -hmm. I would not be that physical playing soccer. Really? Because I knew. You were like a, like a gentle. Yes. Gentle type of so people were watching me and always getting upset. That I wasn't using my body sometimes because I was a bigger mm. player. Yeah. So after Jaden Ayo Tunde Tunde actually told me, like one day he looked me straight in my face. Really? Because he's a very like He's vocal. He's a very vocal and energetic person. So I think he said it more shout than out Tunde. shout out Tunde for real. Miss you dude. And congrats at FIU. I, I seen Oh with the master. Congrats. congrats. Black excellence. I saw him oh. shaking Barack Obama's hand. I didn't yeah, see that. Oh, that's that's huge. I got you, Tunde. But um, we were we were teammates at the time, mm -hmm. and he was definitely he was trying to say it like a joking matter. Cause since I was a big dude, most people would try to walk up to me and like hit me, you know, do a little play fight, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And Tunde said, "You know what? You don't like contact." And I remember that, and the way that it sat in my head. <laughs> it didn't sit right. Just here. to see Bisca Biombo. Now, if people don't know who that is. The Biombo family is like, there are a lot of athletic men in that family. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the Keem, shout out to Biska, shout out to Bismack. But I remember it was like trials for SEMA. And mm, okay, the infamous I'll, SEMA trials. <coughs> man. Just to lay it out, they look like ants out there. <coughs> there is so way many. too many of them. And tell me why I'm walking to the locker room and I see like number 458 walking <laughs> <laughs> the crazy part. That's the truth, though. It'd be all the way into like the hundreds. The it's insane. Yeah. How many teams were there? There was like twelve. No. There's eight teams. There's the, eight. The, for like the years that I were there, the most amount of teams was eight. eight oh, teams. I think I've seen up to like twelve leading up to my graduation. But like honestly. But Orlando City came in. That's, that's why. That's true. Yeah. But now think like looking back at it, you know, in hindsight, mm -hmm. it would be the top team, and that team Gold. obviously shoot. Yeah. They were ridiculous. They were they're, they're beating professional teams and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then of course it's like all the kids that I guess can land right under that go to the like D1 schools and whatnot. Yeah. I was on that team. <clears throat> and so tryouts. I think it's the first or second it had to be the first. Because mm -hmm. I remember two they said that. And then I'm looking at Bisca. Bisca's like six three. I'm five nine, five ten. Mm -hmm. And so I'm watching how he's manhandling everybody. Mm -hmm. Like no one wants to get close to him. So I was like, you know what? Like, I'm trying to be like you, no. my boy. So we play against him. Mm -hmm. And there's the first ball. The ball goes all the way down the left side, uh, left flank. Mm -hmm. There goes Biz Best is tanking down. You know, everyone just thinks he's going to score you big. Yeah. I run straight into him. And I remember everyone was like, 
oh! <laughs> it was like no one else would, you know, come up to me. Yeah. Exactly. But after I realized, like, if I could do this, and he's so much bigger than me, mm -hmm. anyone else is like, sh you know, shorter. Yeah, of course. I'm just saying. So literally, most of my <laughs> defensive back career was waiting for people to play long balls, and, and then body him. Body him. And there's so much like. Dang, so Tunde is like. Shout the out game to Tunde, changer. bro. Shout out to Tunde. That's crazy. For real. You know, Tunde kind of did the same for me. Are you serious? Yeah, I used to train with like Tunde, Levi, Noah. Jeb? Um, I think Jeb maybe like one or two times. Maybe even more. I honestly don't remember too, too well because I was, I was pretty young. I was like. In, ninth grade or eighth grade not even i was like eighth grade oh shoot yeah so they were already in like sophomores juniors in high school um but yeah it was like noah um andrew danny andrew yeah oh, andrew was my boy. Okay. yeah um i would train with them and of course i was just like a little girl training with these guys but it was just coach nando super cool coach Man, nando put so much fire on the people yeah he changed like my whole perspective on soccer because i started so late too so i just didn't really have foundation and i remember i used to get in my head a lot, a lot about it and dun and levy were always the ones that like, like just play like, you're a baller just play and that kind of like sparked the confidence in me and I genuinely think because of them is why, like, I really kept playing. Like, I had so much fun. They treated me so, like, so well just in general and really welcomed me in. And I just had a blast. That's crazy. Shout out, first, shout out to shout Lev. Out. Shout out to Jaden. All those boys. Lev yeah. is an artist. I think I'm giving Levy his flowers now. Somebody definitely has been yeah. trying for the longest time, but has definitely made some crazy songs. And I think you should check them out. So I'm going to put... His link, obviously, in the bio, link under the description. I but listen to him all the time, to be honest. I see his there's videos like on songs, TikTok yeah. and Instagram. And mm -hmm. there's, like, one of his directors that do his music video. Mm -hmm. I'm still watching you, Levy. Keep it up. I just saw him not too long ago. That's what? Okay. Yeah, I was, like, at a little, like, house getty. I, your brother was there, too, actually. Nope. Yeah, and I was hanging out with them. And, yeah, he's doing his thing, for sure. I still, um... There's a couple songs of his that I listen to, but yeah, I asked him and he's he's on the grind. He's doing good things yeah. out there. Shout out Lev. Yeah. Levy, I definitely hit me up, Levy, if you see this, I'll probably get you on here too. But yes. thinking about that now, just in general, obviously like two they probably has no clue that he <laughs> one did that for both of us. And I know, I always lot, think about that, yeah. Yes, there's probably a lot more people that um you he's know he's probably done that for. Same mm -hmm. with a lot of um just people in general. Yeah, so I sure. know that, you know, saying like positive things to people or just being encouraging. Is there anyone else in your life that you can mm -hmm. think of? Or maybe people that you try to do that too, that they definitely like turn around and like thank you. Yeah. Later. No, yeah, of course. I mean, I don't know how I'm like serious you want this to get, but obviously, you know, the situation with my brother, um, it's something I'm very open about, but my brother took his own life last summer and so um he was honestly like my best friend you know we had such a good relationship and he gave me the best advice he was the most uplifting in like my life for so many good times good memories um and so yeah like now i'm at a point where i could talk about it you know i feel like before i would cry or just get like super emotional but um yeah just like a genuine very very good guy like in my life you know, growing up, he was the best big brother, and him, well, I actually, what's crazy is I saw him two days before everything, and honestly, it's good we're talking about this, because I feel like a lot of people don't talk about it, you know, so, and so, um, yeah, two days before um, he committed suicide, we hung out, and I almost kind of had, like, a weird feeling, you know, but he was giving me like such good advice just about life in general and like a part of me didn't of course in a moment you don't really you're not thinking about that you know and so now I look back at all of that and the person that gave me the best advice was him and to this day I'm gonna always wish like I could call him up about you know things but I would say him for sure has motivated me to be that person for others because there was a lot of times where not that I was Bitter. like I always had a good heart towards people but I probably didn't show it as much mm. um, and the second person that I think of other than my brother is this guy 
does care. For sure. No, Big one thousand point. percent. You can ask my mom. <laughs> no, you can ask my mom. Someone, you can ask my dad. LeBron. Um, John LeBron, now knows. Cap Harlow LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just genuinely, I kid you not, there's not a time we don't go to a restaurant. Even just now, we just went to Miller's. <laughs> and I see how he interacts like with the waitress, like just super nice, super friendly. Um, and just anywhere we go. I remember we went to the gas station the other night and there was this man, nobody was helping him out. Naj went right back in, get money, you know, helped him out. So just like stuff like that. Um, yeah, believe it or not, I think about those things a lot. And I think you and my brother are probably like the most, that just shown me and motivated me to be as kind as I can to others, you know? And I know you do everything through the grace of God, of course. Yeah, exactly. On the same wavelength. Um, so yeah, it's just pretty motivational, pretty cool. Yeah. A little sentiment, that's the nicest LP to you. <laughs> that's crazy. Because I bully. I'm going to take it. I'm going to But that, yeah, sure. to even, I wouldn't even think you would know something like that. Because mm-hmm. obviously for how long you've known me, mm-hmm. that's something that I would think that you kind of get used to in a way, mm-hmm. in a sense. But like I genuinely can't, one, see somebody that, you know, needs help and I, I know like, they need it more than me, so I'm gonna to try to help them. And I'm not just saying it for the camera. I've done I it before. Like I do it all the time. Tell also, me. not to cut you off, but just before I forget my ADHD brain, but I think a lot of it, and again, I don't wanna speak like on your situation, um, but again, like I'm a very open book about it. And like earlier we were talking about that year that was really rough. There was times where I thought about taking my own life or going through really bad like mental situations. And I know we've had conversations, again, don't want to speak on any of your experiences, but we've had conversations where we've found similarities and, you know, a lot of mental things that we were probably going through at the time. Um, And still to this day, obviously, we look back. But I think it always stood out to me because I get what you're saying. You know, you're around somebody, you get so used to it. But for me, it always stuck out knowing you and knowing things that probably a lot of people have no clue Mm. that you went through or experienced. And knowing that is like makes me so proud of you too. Um, and just seeing like your growth and seeing how you turn situations that were so negative in your life. Boy. And now it's like you're such a light in so many so many people's lives and even like my mom is opening a or launching a non profit right now. Shout out Healing okay. Miracle Path. Um, I helped that too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she's like the first person she asked me was Send me Naja's number, so mm-hmm. which she probably has it anyways. Which they get a new button. She button. definitely has it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> geez, like a second mom out here. All my Instagram stories. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, like I feel like that alone is a testimony of how you are, like as a person, you know, and how caring you are for others. Yeah. Julie, like even regardless of like this, mm-hmm. thank you for saying that. Cause I don't ever actually feel like that at all. Really? Like zero. Oh, you percent. should. And it's only now, just because you know, the longer that I've been going through life, the older that you get, and the more that you kind of just like see how the world really works. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the very thing that I struggled with in general growing up, this is gonna sound kind of funny, was being nice to women. I really? didn't realize how look down it actually was just to be simply nice to a girl yeah so like some, a lot of females take it the wrong way no 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 i mean in, in the sense of like how men look at it it's like you're actually listening oh because you're you want to be cool care. with the bros there you go so it's like i got i got bullied for mm-hmm. like listening to girls if a girl would have an issue or whatever she's crying she is annoyed whatever i would actually be like what's going on I'm <laughs> Yeah. Kind of. Or I would just try to give them good advice. Mm-hmm. Or just in general, like, be their friend. So, yeah. of course, you know how looked down it is, I guess, mm-hmm. in our age now. Yeah. You can't have a friend that's a, of the opposite gender. Yeah, because then people see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. I hear you. I feel like even us, like, that was a big thing that people always, it like, brought up. funniest thing, though. Yeah, for us, it was funny, of it course. But, you know, like, thing. exactly what you're saying, like, outside people don't understand the dynamic or can't understand, like, maybe, like, boundaries or, like, respect line. You know what I mean? Um, especially that we've always had. We've literally been best friends for, like, forever. Give me something. Give me you something. know how many freaking, <laughs> like, oh, that was how many, um, 